does it take to walk a spiritual path? What's really required? And understanding that, is it helpful to know something about where we can get ourselves into trouble? What, when to not do certain things? Well, actually, that's really what I want to talk about today. What are some things that we should avoid? What are, well, I'm going to call them dangers. What are some dangers for us along the spiritual path? Today, I want to talk about two of them that I think are really important. And as I do, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to click that bell so that you're notified of future videos. So this concept of a spiritual path, it's, it's something that's been used for centuries. We find it in the writings of the mystics like Teresa of Avila and Meister Eckhart. And what it simply means is that as we're engaging in our spiritual growth and development, we're really putting one foot in front of the other and walking along a path. And, and sometimes that path diverges and, and moves and has curves and stuff in it. But the idea is to make progress over time. So if we want to think about dangers along that path, then they're really the things that take us off the path, that, that lead us down roads that we really don't want to be on. So those are the two things I want to talk about. And the first is a really common one, and it's probably been common for ages. And that's really not having a spiritual path. You know, perhaps you have done some spiritual practice or a meditation or kind of prayer or something, and it resonated with you. You realize that you really feel at home with yourself. You feel at peace. You have a sense of healing. And so you engage in that another two or three times, and it's great, and you get sidetracked. And maybe you don't do it for a few weeks. Maybe you don't do it for a month and you go back. And it's good, but it's not quite like it first was. And you know, you, you try it again later, and it's really pretty hit and miss. Or maybe you have gone a certain distance on the path and really developed it, but have fallen away. You know, I was talking to a meditation teacher recently who confessed that he doesn't practice meditation anymore. He used to, but he teaches this method to lots of people. So even though he teaches it, the only time he engages is when he's teaching. He doesn't actually do it. And really, he's not walking a spiritual path. He's not integrating this into himself. He's, he's working off of past knowledge or things that he's read. He doesn't, he really hasn't nurtured his spiritual path. It's so easy for us to fall into this danger because life demands so much from us. Yes, it's great if you can engage in a spiritual practice every day, but some people's lives are just too full to be able to do that. You know, maybe you're working and going to school and raising a family and just have lots of stuff going on. So you need to figure out what's going to be your regular pattern. You have to decide on a regular pattern because it's when you do things with regularity that you see progress. You know, it's, it's like that thing about going to a gym. If we go to the gym just three times a week, work out three times a week, we'll see progress. But if you go three times one week, but not again for a month, well, every time you go back after a month, you're starting over again. You're starting over. And it's the same way with spiritual practice and walking along a spiritual path. Now, the other danger is sort of the 180 degree of what I just talked about. It's at the opposite end of things. It's understanding that there's a, some spiritual practice path, something that really is right for you. It's very consonant with your being. It's, you know, you, you found a meditation group or meditation teacher or religious practice or whatever it may be. And so you're doing it for a while and you want to learn more and you want to learn more and you want to learn more and you read this book and that book and and so, and over time you start quoting the books and and you find yourself getting very well sort of rigid about i have to do it like the book i have to do it the right way and part of what happens then is that we start not living the spiritual path but we get caught up in knowing about it. 
so that we know so much that we're focused on what the path is, but we don't do it. And we all know people like this. They have their text or their teacher or their preacher, whoever it is, and they'll quote the book, they'll quote the Bible, they'll quote the Quran, they'll quote some other text. But yet, in terms of people who are living with peace and wholeness, they've missed it by a mile. It's not so important that you're able to quote things. It's important that you're able to be engaged and that you do things on a regular basis. And that's where your growth is going to come from. So how do you prevent falling into these two dangers? I have two suggestions to help with the two dangers. The first is share with somebody that you're engaged in the spiritual path, that that's something important to you. Maybe it's somebody who's on a similar path, but it doesn't need to be. Let someone else know. Let a few other people know. Getting back to that working out at the gym analogy, it's great whenever someone's able to have a workout partner because that creates accountability. You know, you can say to your partner, okay, Tuesday at two o'clock, we're on and we're going to do it. But even if you don't have that workout partner, if you have people who know that this is what you want to do, they'll support you in it. And having that support helps keeping you engaged and on the path. The other thing that's really important, another analogy from the gym, is, you know, that trainer at the gym who's available to help you when you need it, when you're trying to do something new? Well, that's what a spiritual director is about. Working with a spiritual director periodically helps you to really engage in your practice, work on the path, really see how it's unfolding and help you integrate it into your life. So those are the two dangers. Those are the two things that can help. But what's really important is your commitment to really develop that spiritual dimension of your, of your life through ways that inspire and enlighten you. And I've talked about that in other videos, so check out other videos around what spirituality and spiritual practices are. And in the meantime, be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, leave me some comments, share it with others, and know that I really appreciate your time here at Spirituality Beyond Borders. Have a great day.